The Hope Slide occurred in the early morning hours of January 9, 1965, in the Cascade Mountains near Hope, British Columbia. The slide, which is believed to be the second largest recorded landslide in Canadian history, was estimated to have sent 47 million cubic meters of rock and debris crashing into the valley below, taking the lives of four people. Prior to the landslide, a small avalanche had forced five people to stop a few miles southeast of the town of Hope, British Columbia, on a stretch of the Hope Princeton Highway just below Johnson Peak. At around 4 a.m., the driver of a yellow 1957 Ford convertible, Bernie Lloyd Beck, and his passengers Dennis Arlett and Mary Kalmakoff became trapped by this initial avalanche. About 45 minutes later, truck driver Norman Steph Stefanishin pulled up behind them, followed by a hay truck driver, Thomas Starchuk. Unable to turn his rig around, Stefanishin decided to hike back to the nearby Somalo Lodge, five kilometers away, to get help. However, the others decided not to go with him. Truck driver Starchuk decided to catch up on some sleep, and the occupants of the convertible decided to stay where they were and wait for help. At that time, they had no idea that this decision would cost them their lives. On his way back to the lodge, Stefanishin flagged down a Greyhound Lines bus which was traveling towards the traffic jam and persuaded the driver to turn around. Had he not done so, the actual death count from this tragedy could be much higher. Just before 7 a.m., the southwestern slope of Johnson Peak gave way, sending 47 million cubic meters of pulverized rock, mud, and debris hurtling down the 2,000-meter mountainside. This mass of debris completely displaced the water and mud in Outram Lake with incredible force, wiping out all of the vegetation and trees in its path, then splashing back up the original slope before settling in the valley. The landslide created a debris field as much as 200 feet deep and 2 kilometers wide, which buried the waiting vehicles and the four occupants. Two highway department employees were the first people to realize what had happened. They went to hope for supplies and then returned to the slide, trying to find solid footing to mount a rescue effort, while more debris rained down from the side of Johnson Peak. At 8.20 a.m., Hope RCMP were alerted that two cabins on the west side of the slope had been destroyed. Members of the Hope Search and Rescue carefully made their way through the debris and determined that the cabins had been unoccupied. As dawn crept over the mountain, they kept a close eye out for any vehicles that might have been trapped by the slide. Tanks of Stefanishin's oil truck were spotted washed up along the side of Johnson Peak to the north and rescuers began to make their way to the site, roped together in teams of five so that no one would sink below the surface of the debris and be lost. However, despite these efforts, no traces of any survivors were found, and as the dark descended at end of day, the search was called off. Resuming efforts the next morning, the cab of Thomas Starchuk's hay truck was discovered, and after extensive searching, the bodies of Bernie Lloyd Beck and Thomas Starchuk were recovered. However, Beck's passengers, the 23-year-old Dennis Arlett and 21-year-old Mary Kalmakoff, were never found. And their bodies lay entombed in the remains of the Hope Slide to this day. The landslide itself had been caused by the presence of pre-existing tectonic structures located within the southwestern slope of Johnson Ridge. Johnson Peak had been the site of a previous prehistoric rock slide, and it's believed that ongoing weathering and tectonic activity weakened the slide mass to the point where it broke free and cascaded into the valley. The exact trigger for the 1965 landslide remains unclear although some have cited that sub-zero temperatures and the freezing of seepage at the toe of the slide could have weakened the mass. 
Within three weeks, a temporary rerouting of the Hope Princeton Highway was constructed, as seen in this footage provided by the BC Ministry of Transportation. In the years that followed, a permanent rerouting of the highway was completed, around and over the base of the slide's debris field, and located 55 meters above the original ground level of the valley. The death toll for the incident was officially set to four. However, the mountain has continued to claim lives with a further six people killed on this site as the result of two separate plane crashes. On August 13, 1965, an aircraft piloted by SWK Stevenson crashed, taking his life. Then on April 23, 1966, a Royal Canadian Air Force Grumman CSR-110 Albatross also crashed on the Hope Slide. While cruising with limited visibility due to foggy conditions, the seaplane struck the side of the slope. The aircraft was destroyed, and all but one of the occupants was killed. Just off of Highway 3, a viewpoint was created to allow tourists to view the remains of the slide. Even today, over 50 years later, a massive scar on the mountain face remains easily visible and debris still covers the majority of the valley. Both remain bare, with little growth of trees or other vegetation. And the site remains easily visible when viewed from above. A small memorial at the viewpoint remembers the victims of the slide and the subsequent plane crashes. However, as tragic as this disaster is, it's important to remember that without the actions of Norman Stefanishan turning around a bus full of Greyhound passengers, the impact of this incident could have been much, much worse. <laughs>